Hello, today I will talk about perforated peptic ulcer. Perforation of a gastric or duodenal ulcer is usually a severely painful sudden event. It may occur in those without known peptic ulcer disease, although close questioning may reveal recent symptoms attributed to indigestion. Sudden localized epigastric pain spreads to the remainder of the abdomen. The pain is worse on coughing or moving and may radiate to the shoulder tip. Although distressed, patients often prefer to lie still rather than roll about. However, some patients in extreme pain roll in agony and are unable to keep still for examination or x-rays until analgesia is given. Absent bowel sounds, shock, generalized peritonitis, and fever develop as time passes. According investigations, an erect chest x-ray will demonstrate free gas under the diaphragm in 75% of patients with perforated peptic ulceration. Yeah, in those cases where the diagnosis is suspected, but not proven by x-ray, consider a contrast CT scan. Other relevant investigations are, glucose, amylase, which may be slightly increased, CPC, white blood cells typically increased, O2 saturation, ABG, and ECG to ensure symptoms do not reflect MI rather than peptic ulcer disease. Treatment include the following points. Give O2. Provide IV analgesia, for example morphine titrated according to response. Give an antiemetic, for example slow IV metoclopramide 10 mg. Resuscitate with IV 0.9% saline. Refer to the surgeon and give IV antibiotics, for example sfotaxime 1 gram, and in late presentations, metronidazole 500 mg as well. Now I will talk about other GI perforations. Perforations may affect any part of the GI tract, but the chief causes are peptic ulceration, trauma, diverticular disease, and colonic carcinoma. The emergency treatment principles are similar to those of perforated peptic ulcer. Bowel perforation usually results in gas under the diaphragm on an erect chest X-ray, but remember that there are other possible causes, including recent surgery, peritoneal dialysis, and gas-forming infections. Peptic ulcer disease may also present with upper GI hemorrhage, or pain from esophagitis, gastritis, or dudnitis. If the presentation suggests inflammation of the upper GI tract, and there is no evidence of serious complications, consider discharging the patient with an antacid and GP follow-up. It is not usually appropriate to initiate therapy with proton pump inhibitors in the ED without an accurate diagnosis. Note that some patients require an urgent endoscopy arranged by the GP to exclude a cancer, for example older patients with chronic pain, weight loss, and anemia. Thank you for watching, in the next video we will talk about mechanical intestinal obstruction. Goodbye.